Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I'm so happy to welcome my guest today, Laurie Spagna. Um, she is a best-selling author, spiritual teacher, intuitive, energy healer, an ascension guide. She just like seems to wrap it all in. Um, <laughs> she's just great. Um, she has helped to transform the lives of thousands of people and animals because she's also an animal communicator. Um, she helps the world through her channel, ascension guidance, intuition, animal communication, energy healings, and sacred activation. So welcome, Lori. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful, Anna. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. A lot of your work focuses on um, the different dimensions, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Can you just describe to um, our listeners what that's all about? Yes. So dimensional reality is based on vibrational frequency, energetic vibrational frequency, and also light and sound. So in the in the first three dimensions, we have basically light, sound, and space, height, width, and depth, including our perspective of time. That's a space. That's the first three dimensions. The fourth dimension is where you reside a lot of the time. That's where a lot of our um, animals who cross over, family, loved ones who cross over might reside, or they might just transition through. That's kind of like Grand Central Station in a way. Consciousness can pass through. It's also where all of our thoughts come from and go to, our emotions. They're sort of residing in that fifth dimension, fourth dimensional plane. It's vibration, it's energy, different light spectrums that we might not see with our eyes, that's there. Um, ghosts, you know, that kind of thing is, is, is what we find in fourth dimension. Also where we, com where we create our ideas and our beliefs and our belief systems and where we anchor into them, that could be there. Like it's everything that's basically non-physical, but is real. That's fourth dimensional reality. And again, it's vibrational. Fifth dimensional reality is, is where we incorporate everything of the first three dimensions and the fourth dimension. Sorry, some street noise. We incorporate all that and we bring it into the fifth dimension. And by doing that, we anchor into a whole new vibrational range. So it's within us. Right? It's not somewhere we go to, but this new vibrational range tends to be one where we are more at one. We're more at one with all that is. We understand death, the afterlife. We understand consciousness in a whole new way. We've taken more responsibility for all of our thoughts, our beliefs, what we create, our manifestation, our reality. We understand how we create our reality and we start acting and behaving more from our heart center because the energies of fifth dimension are based in love, peace, joy, kindness, compassion, forgiveness, the energies of the third dimension tend to be based more in fear, fear and anxiety, worry, doubt, uncertainty, disbelief, unknowing, skepticism, debate, argument, disagreement. And it's not that love isn't there because of course love is there. It's just that it's got to work with all those other frequencies. So it's here in the fifth dimensional reality, this becomes a new vibratory state of being. And really we've worked through by passing through energetically that fourth dimension, we've worked through all of that, those lower constructs, those lower frequency energies of fear and et cetera. So that now we're living more wholly and completely from the energetics of love and peace and joy and those what we call higher frequencies. So do you Does that make sense? Yeah, do you think we're in the fifth dimension now? I think that we have the opportunity to live here and be here energetically and have that experience reflected to us. But in order for each of us to have that experience, we must make the inner transformation, the inner change required by, yes, up-leveling our vibration. And the way we do that is we change inherently the way we've been, the way we've believed, the way we've thought, the way we've behaved, what we've bought into, what we've aligned with energetically, what we allow to pass through our, our bodies, what we allow to be in our energetic experience. So all things that are fear-based, we unplug from, we, we choose to no longer energetically align with. 
and all things of our own beliefs and our belief systems, our thoughts, our opinions, our judgments, our perspectives, all energy frequencies and vibrations of our body and being, we have to shift those and up level them. So that's a process. Are we here? Yes, it's here. It's right now. It's available for anybody. But one person's vibrate. It's like AM and FM. You can tune into whichever channel you want. You can listen to country. You can listen to rap. You can. It's all here. It's just what are you tuning into and what are you vibrationally compatible with? What are you harmonizing with? And based on whatever any person harmonizes with, that is what their reality is going to reflect to them more and more of. And so, yeah, sure it does. Um, but also, so you're talking about harmony, what people harmonize to. And harmony is contagious. It spreads. Mm -hmm. So if one person moves into this place, it attracts other people into it as well because mm -hmm. they feel the vibration because we yes. it with each other. So yes. that's the way that um, I'm thinking, you know, society can change. We can change humanity. The upliftment of one person one person uplifts the whole of humanity and so then what's hard for us to believe but it's really true because oh, the no. one yeah. person is uplifting their vibration and becoming more aligned with the whole of love and peace and joy and oneness and goodness for all and the positive upliftment of all one person lifting their vibration can assist the whole of humanity to elevate and not only assist but actually raises the vibration of the whole yeah, and the higher the vibration, obviously, the more love there is because it goes up to the highest vibration, which is pure yes. love. And the betterment of life on earth, the, the betterment that life will be on earth. Yeah, that's, um, I hope, you know, people really hear that because it's coming to us from in different languages. Different people are talking about the same thing using different language so that people can hear. You know, like open up your ears and hear what's going on because by you doing this, you're going to help yourself, your family, your friends, your community, your country, the world, you know, because we all move into, into that place. How did you get into this? Like, how did you? Wow. It's such a journey, Anna. I, first, I never intended it. I was just, I just, what happened was my, my brother died of an unexpected drug overdose. I started hearing him in my head. I didn't even know I had that ability. He would come to me initially and he, we were from New York and he would say, hey, law, it's your dead brother, Jeff. He was a comedian. He was so funny. And that's how he would come because he, it was a joke to him. Like he wasn't dead. And at first I started like, you know, I was in that state of disbelief. I couldn't believe it. it took me like a year just to unpack that, just to start opening to that connection and listening to what I was hearing and receiving the messages and getting the wisdom. And the overall message was, he was my wake up call. He was like, you have to change your ways or you're on a similar trajectory as me. And believe me, at that time, I was doing all kinds of things. I mean, I was abusing alcohol and abusing cigarettes and caffeine and my credit cards were being abused. I was six figures in debt and my, my body was off, overeating, you know, the whole thing. I was going to doctors, they were pumping me up with pharmaceutical drugs. So I took the call, I changed my ways. I quit my six figure job and decided to go after my dream of helping animals. I became a dog trainer. I worked with the dogs for a year as a dog trainer and they started talking to me. And they started saying, we're gonna teach you and let us be your teachers. And so I started listening and paying attention and watching and they became my teachers. I got really good at telepathy with animals. Within two years, I moved to Maui. I lived there for two years. That is a whole other story. But within two years of, of, of really making the change, the, even the initial change, all that stuff I talked about was gone. Cigarettes gone forever, alcohol gone forever overeating, artificial food substances gone forever, the excessive caffeine, like all of it, the pharmaceutical drugs, even over the counter drugs, all of it gone. And it's not like I had to work at that in a sense, because as I got aligned with my true vibration, the real essence of who I was meant to be and who I was meant to become and my true service and mission, that stuff just fell away. It wasn't even interesting to me. And when you lose all that stuff, your vibration goes higher and higher and higher right. and so that you can move more into your soul's purpose. Yes, exactly. That's a, that's a wonderful story. And the, the other thing I want to really say was that what I was doing, like without even realizing, was I was just following my love. 
I loved animals. I loved being of service. I, I started loving meditation. I started loving being in nature. I just was loving all those things that were good for me. And as I loved them, and I, I, got, I got into Reiki, I got my Reiki master. I started taking all those esoteric practices of energy healing. And I just kept doing what I loved and being of service to animals because I loved that and they're humans. It just kept growing. And that's the, like the, one of the best things I can tell to people is like, if you can be of service doing what you love, just little bits of it, lit, whatever, it's just going to lead you in the right direction. I tell Joy people all the time when they talk about what is my mission? Well, what is it that you love to do? What brings you happiness? And there's always a connection to yes. helping other people in some way, you know? Yes. Um, and if it brings you happy, you know, there's ways to, to take that forward and to put food on the table doing all these things because the angels will help. They'll get yes, you. Yes, so true. You will be yeah. divinely supported. And you don't, you're, you don't get handed your mission on a platter most of the time. Some people do, but most of the time it's more like follow the breadcrumbs of your joy, of your love, of your contribution. Breadcrumb, breadcrumb by breadcrumb, it will be revealed and it will be amplified as you so as you so because the gifts that you give along the way further develop and enhance your own gifts yes. talents and abilities and as you are of service the universe the divine the one true god of light of creation however we know and understand that divine source continues to give to us so that we can be of service and our mission becomes revealed to us through our joy through our love and our service so and even yeah. when it comes to you on a platter, like, I mean, I'm a born medium, so it kind of came right. to me, but then I moved away right. from it because I didn't want to be different, you know? Right, um, right. And so I had to go through my own motions, you know? Yeah. And in retrospect, I really had to, to become who I was supposed to be. This was my journey. So mm -hmm. it's always interesting how it plays out in different people. And, you know, and, you know, your mission may not be to communicate with animals or to communicate with souls. It may just be to show compassion to people. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, is it so hard to smile at the guy who's packing your groceries and mm -hmm. say, thank you, mm -hmm. you know, that pushes up your vibration and it's part mm -hmm. of everybody's mission. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really, um, I think that's really important. You talk yeah. a lot about ascension. What, mm -hmm. what is ascension? Well, ascension is going on right now for the whole of humanity. Ascension is, I would use the word evolution, the evolutionary process that all of existence is going through. It's happening geographically, like physically on earth, it's geographical changes. Um, it's happening politically, massive political changes. It's happening uh, in terms of our educational systems, massive changes in the way we educate ourselves and the way we are educated, massive changes in mass media. We already see the shift to social media and what's going on with that. Massive changes, I mean, across all up spiritually, more and more people are waking up to our own divinity. We're realizing that the source, that source is within us, around us, in everyone, everything, Amen. everywhere. It's not separate from us. This is happening across all levels and layers of our society. And of course, as we started our conversation, it's happening on a personal level. We have to make a choice to change from within so we can shift from the old paradigm third dimension to a new paradigm way of being. And then from there, it's limitless too. Yeah. So that's, to me, that's what ascension is. It's a, it's a, it's an evolutionary process that we are all going through and however we choose to participate in it and experience it, it's happening. So is this a good thing for humanity? Ultimately, yes, it is. an. I see it as an extremely good thing because we're moving out of a system. The old system is a patriarchal, oligarchal, tyrannic, you know, it's a system of top down service to the few at the expense of the many. And it's a system of profit and gain at the expense of others. That is not serving humanity any longer. And that system is collapsing. And the new system that's being born from within us and by us and through us is a system that serves the greater good of all for the 100% ideally positive upliftment of all. So ultimately, this is what's going to come through 
but we're in the massive amount, the throes of it. So we're just mostly seeing a lot of collapse right now. Not as much, it is coming up from, from the ashes, it's coming up the newness that will be for the positive upliftment of all, and it's happening. It's hard to see through the ashes as they collapse, right? Well, you talk about patriarchal. Do you think we're more grounded now in the divine feminine? I think that is a huge part of what has happened in the last year. And I think that's why we're seeing so many of the systems collapse. I also think that there's more of that to come, more divine feminine being anchored. I think we will see it, you know, yeah, yeah in the world leadership and that will change. And yes, so I think it's here and I think we're, good, we're working with it more. Because if we really look at feminine and masculine, it's not a gender thing, mm -hmm. right? We know we all have feminine and masculine energy within us, but we also know that masculine energy, I mean, this is, this is perhaps a new concept to many, but it's the force, it's the action, it's the activity to create. And feminine is the being, the allowing, the receiving, the witnessing, the the aligning, the energetic frequency. So when we're creating our reality, when we're choosing the kinds of experiences that we're going to have and how we're going to um, dance with, play with our whole experience of reality, if we're at the more conscious we're becoming and, the le and accepting, we're, no we're noticing we have to include a balance of that beautiful sacred feminine with that beautiful, powerful masculine. And as that comes into harmony within us, more and more of it is going to be more anchored too. Yeah, I think that's really important. You know, it's not just, it's not gender. It's, it's but coming together the masculine and feminine, not just the feminine, not just the masculine, brings us into balance. And we know everything has to be in balance. What yes. I so love about the divine feminine grounding, it's the energy of nurture. You know, mm -hmm. so there's, we don't have to fight. We can nurture, nurture ourselves, nurture others. And that energy is coming in to help us get yes. to that level, which is so beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. And, and I know your book about uh, Mother Mary is such a beautiful example because the divine feminine is and has been held by our ascended master goddesses, such as Mother Mary and so many of the other ascended goddesses. Uh, who are ascended masters in their own right, who have held that for us in a sense. And it's also in Mother Earth, Gaia, Sophia. Mm -hmm. So it's helping us to cultivate that within us and mm -hmm. to start utilizing it in that way. So, Which yeah. is such a shame because we have, you know, destroyed Gaia, Pacamama. We have taken it to pieces and she's revolting. You know, I mean, the earth breathes. And we also, I think we've learned through the pandemic, is to, we have to honor. You know, we have to honor the earth. We mm -hmm. have to honor what's in nature because that's our church. Yes. You know, that's where we go to um, become one with the world. And, I, and, so, and we've destroyed it. I mean, yes. for that brass ring, for that dollar, you know, we kind of, for the supremacy, you know, we can't, we can't beat the earth. We're not going to beat the earth. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, also, I do think she's doing like, um, like a toxic cleanup in a sense that she's saying, Hey, if you take care of your bodies and I am, she, she, mother earth knows, I mean, this has come through in my channeling that she knows every one of the footprints that walk on her. She knows every one of us as individuals. And what she's saying in a sense is, you know, live toxin free. So our bodies can be healthy, our bo collective body and our individual bodies. And so in a way she's showing us like wherever there's toxin, people are getting like, you know, having more challenges and stuff, but where there's health and well-being, this is, this is, this is what will uplift us all. Yeah. So it's, a, it's also a call to, to become more clean in the way we eat, the way we breathe, the way we nourish. And it all, it's all self-care. Yeah, it's mind, body, and spirit. I say that all the time. You'd have to take care of your whole being, you know, yes. every bit of it. So hopefully people will be listening, you know, to all the things they need to do and actually do them. You know, there's one thing to, to, to hear the words, but then to truly listen and yes. to feel, you know, um, not just in the moment, but, you know, as we go forward in life and to teach our children, you know, yes. that's really important as, as well. You know, I, I do think that the next generation is more grounded 
in a lot more things, you know, a lot of them are very old souls. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to understand this speak louder than maybe our generation has. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully we can bring that to them in a really, um, in a really big way. So it sounds to me like you're very optimistic about where humanity is going. I'm extremely optimistic. I feel that the way we've been living for the past um, easily, you know, easily hundred years has not been aligned with nature or, and has not been aligned with necessarily love or the greatest divinity within ourselves. But I do see that as an experience that we went through and we've learned and we've grown and we, we are evolving now. So I, I'm very optimistic about the future of humanity. I don't think it's going to be easy for everybody. I didn't say that. I just think that we're undergoing a radical transformation that's requiring us to change from the inside out. And that change is going to be fabulous. And if we are on board with it and we participate in it, it's beautiful. I think it's so exciting. You know, yeah. I mean, when, when they, you know, when I became a regular guest on Dr. Oz, I remember sitting back and saying, oh my God, this is this conventional show that is letting me on. This spiritual person talking about spirituality. To me, that's what it's about. It's about opening up the mind of people in even a conventional setting yes. where they may say, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have an open mind about this. Yes. I'm gonna think about what this is all about. And, you know, I think that's what you're saying as well. You know, let's get there because we are evolving. So yes. much better than going backward which we have done through history, you know, yeah. now these were going forward until we can reach that great source, which is um, very, very, very excited. I'm excited about it. I, I am too. I mean, spirituality is going to become a new kind of norm in a whole new way because the most beautiful thing is that like quantum physics is validating everything that spirituality is, has been saying, you know, like the the, in different lay ways and different languaging, just as you were saying earlier. But now we have the scientific understanding of it to validate it that really unifies. And not only does it unify, it, it really unifies like all parts of our consciousness, left brain, right brain, heart center and brain, heart and gut, core pillar, like all the chakras. It just brings everything together. It unifies people because we can find, even though our languaging is different, we can find this common ground of understanding. It's it's really going to be very beautiful. And it's I think, like again, it's going, to away. it's going to bring us into balance. You yes. know? No more of the nonsense that we have been experiencing, I think, from the beginning of time. You yeah. know, um, whether yeah. it was a patriarchal society, a matriarchal society, it was always the top down. And mm -hmm. it was always, you know, adore me. You know, and I think that's changing <laughs> into how about we adore us. Right. Yeah, that's really important. It is really beautiful. Like if you take some time and just without spending too much time, like look at the internet for everyday people, what they're doing. Everyday people are just coming into so much magnificence mm -hmm. and brilliance and wow, I'm just amazed at what some people are doing, what they're coming up with, like some of the inventions, the creations, just even the way they're living their lives. And I know for me, I just traveled across the country for the past six months, you know, I mean, I just drove across country by myself during a pandemic, you know, like I'm leading retreats for people who are coming into their greatness and their power and their alignment with the divine. I'm activating DNA, you know, like things that I just never thought were possible 20 years ago when I got on this path. Oh, I know. You know, you know, and we're all so busy. You know, anybody who is doing this work, we're very busy, which, you know, is testament to what people are seeking. You know, they're seeking mm -hmm. that, that to be anchored. They're seeking mm -hmm. the groundedness. They're seeking the spirituality. They want to be led to it. And I think that's very, I mean, I, I, I think it's wonderful. And I think that it helps us continue on our paths and help people get onto their paths because some people parallel their paths or yes. make a left turn or a right turn. And we've all done that, you know, yeah. none of us are perfect. You know, we, we've gone all our different ways. And how is this helping animals as well, this change? Well, the animals, the interesting thing about animals in the animal kingdom is that they're actually here helping us. 
So an animal doesn't have to learn forgiveness. Like anyone who's had a pet, like a pet, you know, a comp animal companion, you know, that's true. They don't have to learn kindness. They don't have to learn happiness. They don't have to learn joy. They don't have to learn to change their thoughts or their beliefs. They're just already there. The thing is, and I'll just throw in a little science here. Animals are already super telepathic and they're psychic sponges and empathic sponges. So what's the science of this? They're already operating primarily from what we call the theta brainwave. Humans haven't really learned how to get into that brainwave. We have to teach ourselves. It's not something we learn in school, but that's the brainwave of telepathy. So that's where we can communicate with another living being or someone who's physically crossed over. We're accessing another realm and another energetic frequency. Also, animals are already heart-centered. It's not like us, we have to learn how to really use the brain matter in our heart. There literally is, and this is scientifically valid, brain matter in our heart. Institute of Heart Math is a great example of scientific validation of that fact, but we're not using it. We have to develop it and strengthen it just the way we would a muscle. Same thing with our gut. We have brain matter in our gut. Again, this is already scientifically valid by scientific studies, but we have to develop it. That's like the gut instinct, the gut knowing. Animals already have this. So in a sense, they're already behaving in very advanced ways. They just don't use their mouths to speak and they don't have the digits of their hands to physically yeah. create but they're already using all of these extra sensory abilities and they're already tapped into these and really embodying these higher frequencies that we're trying to evolve into. So they're here to help us. <laughs> they're they're such thing. cool little beings. When my husband, um, he never called me when he was on the home, coming home from work and I had little children, but my dog the minute he left the office, I would know because the dog would run to the door and I knew in a half hour, he's going to be home. You know? <laughs> you know? So your dog was so tuned into your husband's yeah. brain waves that your dog picked up on that and would say, ah, he's on his way home. I can't wait. And because your dog doesn't operate in time, linear time, the way we do, he's not like looking at the clock. He's just, ah, he's on his way home. Okay. He's in the now of knowing. So he goes right to the door. You operate in linear time. Ah, it takes them half an hour to get home because you started to learn the pattern. Mm -hmm. When my dog barks at the door, that means Pop my be home. <laughs> so you made that linear and he became your human alarm clock. Yeah, it was great. That's an amazing way, right? Because you, you both were tapping into consciousness and tuning in to higher messages of, right? That's another form of extrasensory ability. Yeah. Great That's example. Cool. So exactly. how do you communicate with animals? So you communicate with past animals as well as living animals. Yes, yes. Well, I just tap into their frequency. The moment I can hear their name, I can immediately just call them forward. Usually what's, the, the thing is, is that with a lot, and we were saying this before we started, with a lot of humans, they sort of expect their animals to say what they want the animals to tell them. But for me, I tune to the animal and say, what do you want to share? What is important for you to share with your human? And that's really how I'm of service to the animals. It's more like I'm here to help the animals get through what they want. So it's not always like, oh, he liked his red ball or he liked his bath or, you know, it's more like usually what I get is like how that animal is serving the human and what their mission is in relationship to the human that they live with. Sorry, there's a fly right here. There's a fly. Oh, that's funny. Like so, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how it works. But I'm always tapping in. The moment I do it, I'm just going right to a frequency bandwidth that where that animal resides. And I'm just asking them to engage with me at that, at their frequency. So if I tell you my dog's name, you think you can tap in a little bit for us? Yeah. What, it, what, tell me. His name um, is Martini. Oh yeah. Okay. This, this is the one you mentioned earlier. So, and I've never tapped into this dog's consciousness before, but I know right away. And this is, to me, at first, it's going to seem so easy, right? It, this seems so obvious, but the finer things, you like the finer things and you enjoyed the finer things, but let's get a little deeper. So this animal immediately is saying, pay attention to the M. My name was chosen on purpose because I was meant to help and facilitate. I was meant to help and facilitate Anna's connection to the higher realms, including archangels and yes, Mother Mary. In a way, I was to a certain degree, not only a beacon of light for her, yes, I was that, but especially 
I was especially a conduit for her through the heart love that we shared and through our deep, deep connection together. I, of our love, I served as a conduit for her to connect to higher realms and strengthen her ability. The letter M is significant in this sense for it, the vibration of M itself is a vibration of the mother, is a vibration of, we will use the word, I will use, this is almost like a collective. So it's coming through as a, a we, it's like this animal has moved on to a collective. Uh, we will use the word, uh, a manipulation, but, but be aware that the manipulation is not a negative in this sense, to manipulate the higher realms. This is how I was a conduit. Your animal comes through very clearly because you are so clear. Do you understand? Does this make sense to you, what I just absolutely, was saying here? Absolutely makes sense. Absolutely. And also, um, at the time that your animal was in your life, was that when your children were being born? No, he came when my children, my, one was six and one was 12. Okay. I'll tell you why I asked that question was, um, it's like the word teeny lit up. And I said, why is that relevant? I asked, why is that relevant? Well, the teeny ones teeny. around, teeny ones. So I asked the question, were they just being born? But your children were children. But he, was, so, teeny. he was teeny. Oh, that's interesting. Too. But essentially the message I'm understanding is, was also to facilitate two, two things here. You were caring for your children, but you needed something that was really for you. And at the same time, Martini was a playmate for your children to also facilitate a lot of joy and fun and playful innocence and, the, and enjoyment, pleasure. And also just to, also uh, the second part to be there for you because you were, you know, it was a lot of work for you. Not work in the sense, you know, you were there for your kids and he was there for you. And he was also there for them. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes absolute sense. And I'm just like seeing this triangle, like, yes, all were, be, all were supported. Like, you know, the children were being supported through Martini's role. You were being supported and Martini's love. Just yeah, makes a lot of sense. Does yeah. that make sense? It makes sense. And I feel him around me. And we got him with another dog. So we had two dogs come in at the same time. Which oh, interesting. But let me just say, that's what I mean by the collective of Martini. When you say he's around you, he is. Because in a sense, God, this fly is just hanging out here now. In a sense, he's part of what we would call your collective. So he is still around you. And I say that's a collective in the sense that you have a big community with you in the non-physical. Your non-physical group, and you know this, is many members and that's like your oversoul family right that's your group of beings from the non-physical who are part of your family in the non-physical and he's in there you know what's so interesting about him if i would say to him do you want to go to my office i mean it was like i was saying do you want to go to disney world mm -hmm. he just because he felt it in there he mm -hmm. felt what i did in there and he would go in there and just kind of like okay I'm mm -hmm. going to relax. And he really wouldn't move, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, he helped me in a lot of ways in what I did and how I did it. So yes. It was, it's, yeah. he's still doing it. He's still helping. That makes so much sense. And the other image I'm getting is like, it's the image of the chalice, you know, that image, which could be like a martini, but it's this image of the chalice to me is always an image of being uplifted and uplifting mm -hmm. others. And that was such a huge part of his role in your life, upliftment to support you and to also, yes, he really did benefit. So a lot of animals, you know, they're also on their journey of their own evolution and their experience. So on the one level, there are teachers to us, there are healers to us, but they're also on their evolution of upliftment of their own. And that's what I'm understanding that chalice to mean. Like he was uplifted and so were you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a blessing. Yes. Yeah have an animal. Can I ask you, um, when you were talking about your brother before, mm -hmm. um, he keeps saying um, he's so sorry that he hurt, not you, but there's another woman with an L name. My um, mother, Lois. Okay. He's saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because I feel like he just, before he died, he even, he was ripping her heart out. Um, he wants you to pass on that, you know, she's okay. 
um, but that he really does love her. Mm-hmm. That ha- he should have, I feel like there were so many opportunities for him to have changed and he just, he didn't take those opportunities. Instead, mm-hmm. he was able to pass so that he could help you move out of your space. That mm-hmm. was part of his journey. Yes, totally, so, totally. Yeah, he's a nice, beautiful energy. So if any of you are interested in Laurie, which I'm sure you are, she has a bunch of books on Amazon. If you just go to her Amazon page, which is Laurie Spagna, Mm S-P-A-G-N-A. She also has a Facebook page under her name, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They can go. Yeah. It's my name, Laurie Spagna. Yep. And my website is my name too, Laurie Spagna. So I didn't do her name right. It's Spagna. And I oh, no, you can say Spagna. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, they're both, they're both accurate. It's just my way of pronunciation is Spagna, but they are both accurate. You didn't do it wrong. <laughs> and you can go to her website. There's a whole bunch of information on her website. Yeah. She teaches, she has individual sessions with people. And obviously, you've, if you've listened to this podcast, she's pretty remarkable um, wow. and is one of the ones that are going to help us move fully into this fifth dimension reality. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Oh, Anna, thank you so much for having me. It's been such a joy and a pleasure.